On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we're headed to Southern Ohio to visit Ryan Springer's home. Ryan is a civil engineer by trade and a diehard whitetail enthusiast. Get ready to see a home full of giant whitetail bucks, DIY elk, and plenty of shed antlers. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more Whitetail Cribs episodes. The Exodus team is traveling around the United States to take a look inside the trophy rooms of some of the most interesting whitetail hunters in the country. From giant bucks, unique racks, and riveting stories, welcome to Whitetail Cribs. Hi guys, my name is Ryan Springer. Welcome to my crib. Come on in, take a look at the kitchen. You can see uh, one neat thing about this is a picture that we've got from my father and my son in Idaho. Uh, you were what, eight years old? Able to get out there on his first elk hunt? So that's it's probably got most of us beat. I'll show you my fridge. Got some of my favorite beer, Jackie O's, Dark Apparition, Athens, Ohio, good stuff. Look for it. This is my son, Mason. Hi. <laughs> Future deer hunter. <laughs> Watch out for the poles. And my daughter, she's not here, currently at a Girl Scout meeting. So this is a picture of her, Kate and she will be hunting this year for the first time. Show you one of my whitetails. Um, shot this guy some years ago. He, he was shot out of a ground blind. The, the particular landowner didn't feel it was fair that you could hunt out of a tree stand. So I built a little ground blind and stood in that tree stand or that ground blind itself for probably four hours back in my younger days. And you could stand there without moving for about four hours. So he finally came through as, as I hoped, uh, made about a 15 yard shot. And it was nice, nice little retreat. So this is the original part of the house on this side. Um, when we bought it, uh, we knew it was gonna be good for an addition. So we added this portion and this portion was going to be one story, um, but I was fortunate enough to shoot a bull in Idaho. And just before we built the uh, addition, we decided to go ahead and make it a cathedral ceiling. Uh, so come on in, you can take a look at it. This is the bowl that redesigned the house. Um, it was drafted up. I'm an engineer, so I had AutoCAD and had this uh, whole house addition drawn up with this being a, a non-cathedral ceiling. And when I shot this, I called my wife and basically said, we got to redesign the house because this bull was so big. Um, if we had a one story, his chest would be on the ground and his horns on the head <laughs> up at the ceiling. So anyhow, that was the bull. He's not a tremendous bull after I've done some hunting now, um, but he was, he was a great one for my first one. Shot him on day two. Um, of a, about a 10 day hunt. Didn't know what I was doing. Uh, had never called in an elk, sat in one spot, um, calling for about, you know, the entire day. By that evening, um, he just bugled off three times in a row. I picked up my radio, called my friend who was just out the ridge, and I said, I got a hunter over here by me. And he said, yeah, I heard that. And, and uh, so I called back. And within five minutes, that bull and a cow come running straight in and he gave me a 20 yard shot. Worked out real good. So I'll start over here with the white tails. Um, this is one of the first large deer I shot. Uh, this would have been sometime back in the nineties. Um, nice deer there, shot him in early morning. Um, 19 point, scores about 170. And then we have this bull, shot this, uh, shot this two years ago in Idaho. Um, a funny story about this was a friend of mine and I were hunting together and we were easing down a ridge that morning, right at daylight. 
and we had just sat down to kind of take a look at the field that was out ahead of us, you could, gray light, you could just barely see. And it was his turn to shoot. So when this bull just happened to walk up on us at 40 yards, he went to draw probably two times, maybe three. Um, the first time I think his release came off, it shot his arrow a foot or so. The second time his knock came off as he went to draw. <laughs> By the third time I looked at him and I said, this is my shot, so I went ahead and took it. <laughs> so, so that bull, he, he only ran probably 80 yards. Um, nice bull, good shot, worked out well. You can see some of the sheds. Um, this particular shed uh, was off of that deer the year before. Uh, we pick up quite a few sheds. I've got an outfitting business, Bow Hunting Ohio Whitetails. Uh, we take a good inventory of our deer, so we try to pick up the sheds and track what's around. Uh, but this particular shed, um, a friend of mine found it, and he told me, he said, if you shoot that deer, I'll give you this shed. So I hunted this deer um, for at least two years before I finally had the opportunity, and, and I did shoot it. And it took him almost two years to give me this shed. <laughs> I worked at it, but he did give me the shed, so we got it, and it's got the got the right spot now. But that deer, uh, it scores about 170. Uh, shot him at about 15 yards on foot, standing on the ground. Um, some of these deer, I get them, you know, from a tree, some from the ground. I, I really, once now that I elk hunt, I've learned, you know, that I like hunting on the ground, even if it's for whitetails. Now there is a huge advantage of being in a tree, but if I have the opportunity on the ground, I'll take it. Uh, these are match seven by seven elk sheds. Uh, picked those up in Pennsylvania. Um, a friend of mine, his, uh, his father has a camp over there and we were fortunate enough to hook up with him. And he took us out for the day and did some shed hunting. We had walked probably 20 miles before meeting him um, and didn't pick up any. Saw some elk, had a great time. Uh, but once we met with him and got on some private land, you know, we were in the shed. So I picked these up, match seven by seven. Uh, a friend of mine that was with me picked up two real nice rights. Um, so it was, it was a good time. We had a great trip. Uh, this particular whitetail up here, um, the neighbor had uh, been watching this deer probably about a mile away um, all summer. I wasn't aware of the deer. Um, that evening, a friend of mine were on the porch and we were talking um, and, and about uh, four o'clock he looked at his phone and he was, he was noticing the front that was coming through and we always watched the barometer and the barometer was heading down. So I decided I would hit the woods real quick. So I ran out, um, snuck into my tree stand. I know the deer bed close to where I hunt. So I eased my way in, I was sitting in a tree. I was probably there for about 20 minutes and I just kind of laid my head back and rested my eyes a little bit and then I, I must have heard something because I opened my eyes and I kind of focused ahead. The hill goes up. Um, so I'm kind of looking right at him and and I see a nose looking at me and then I, he barely moved and I see a main beam clear over here move and I thought it's time to get down to business. So I was able to get stood up and that deer just kind of stood there for about 10 minutes and he probably took three steps forward in 10 minutes until he finally turned broadside. And, you know, heart was beating by then. I was shaking pretty good. He stepped um, in between two trees, uh, right at these vitals, you know, at the front and one at the rear. So I had a good long shot. Put the pin on, push, pull, squeeze, made the shot. He actually ran towards me. And I always shoot him again if I can, as many times as I can. So I did, made the second shot. Uh, deer probably ran 20 yards and, and he was down. So that was that was my best. He scores about 184. Um, it's hard to tell from here, but he has tremendous mass. He has five inches all the way out the main uh, beams. He's, he's a good deer. And what's kind of unique about those, uh, that rack, it's very light. If you lift it up, it doesn't have the weight of this rack. Um, this one is heavy and dense, but that particular rack is very light. The, outf or the uh, taxidermist said that that was one of the lightest racks he'd ever felt. It's real porous and you can kind of see some of the holes going up the inside of the main beam, but um, I guess it was just because he put so much mass on. I don't know. Uh, some more sheds over here that we've picked up. Um, smaller buck. This was probably when my son and daughter were in that two, three year old range. It's tough to get out. 
Um, you know, you're at home a lot, you're trying to get out as much as you can. You can't sit in a tree stand for 140 hours in November, like one of my best years. Um, so anyhow, that was that was 130 inch. I was happy to get him. Um, I wanted a European mount, so that's, that's why he's there. This particular deer, um, I caught him two by six. I'd saw him the year before, and he had six on one side and two on the other. Uh, watched him pretty regularly. Passed him up multiple times. The next year he came in, I said, oh, he's good enough. You know, 160-ish. Um, it, it was a cool morning, uh, a little bit foggy. It was damp. Uh, I think it had rained overnight, so there wasn't much sound. I looked down and there he is with a doe, literally right underneath me. So I managed to stand up with all kinds of clothing on, which that's not easy, and get turned quietly, drew and made the shot directly beneath me. So that, was, that worked out pretty well. Uh, the other deer to the right, uh, he scores about 152. Um, that deer showed up, it was a midday movement. Uh, we, had, we had a full moon. So when we have a full moon, I tend to, uh, don't pay a lot of attention to mornings and evenings. Middle of the day is kind of the time then. Um, and I knew of this particular bedding zone and I knew of a particular doe group that bedded on this ridge. And this was kind of the travel route in between. So I had planned on this deer being in the neighborhood, you know, midday, sure enough, he showed up at 11 o'clock um, out of the blue and gave me a nice shot. Um, he didn't go 20 yards. So that was, that was a pretty nice deer there. And then you can see some of the hides. Um, my daughter, she always wanted to be a, a trapper and a hide tanner from the age of three. So when she was about four or five, we started, you know, saving some hides. Uh, I've got a couple white tails that she and I've tanned together, uh, elk, elk hide that we've tanned. Um, you also see the coyote shot that. That was, uh, that was back in the nineties with some friends. We did quite a bit of coyote hunting back then. And this was this year's deer. Um, he scores 164 uh, gross. All these are gross. Um, I wasn't aware of this deer. I had a neighbor on the east side of me. He had been watching them all summer and sharing some pictures with me. Um, I have a, had a neighbor on the west side of me, uh, had pictures in the fall of this deer and had actually passed him up last year as a 150 inch deer uh, in hopes that he would put on some inches and he did. Um, but I was fortunate enough to, uh, to there again, watch the fronts and I saw, you know, a, a particular front pushing in. So I headed to the woods that evening and uh, sure enough, this guy was on his feet checking some does. Um, he was out at about 60 yards. It was getting close to dark. I had turned around and spotted a deer, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. I threw up my binox and was looking for a little bit, and I finally caught a glimpse of a tine. I said, oh, it's a buck, you know, and then I see it kind of walk up and check a doe, and, but I wasn't sure how good he was until um, he finally made a scrape, and then I caught a better glimpse of tine, and I knew that I had something. Um, so at that point, I thought, how am I gonna get this deer over here? The wind was ripping up the ridge. It was, it was windy. Um, he couldn't hear me. I, I mouth bleated. There again, back to my elk calling. I'm not afraid to, you know, do some odd things. So I mouth bleated really loud. Three times on the third time, I progressively got louder and louder. On the third time, he heard me and raised his head up and just started walking straight to me. So as he came in, um, you know, basically I, I was around the tree. Um, once he hit 30 yards, I got a real good look at him. And at that point I knew that he was a shooter deer. Um, when he came in, he made it to 20 yards. I drew at 20, 19, 18, 17. At 17 yards, I had a shot. I just needed to him to stop. And he finally did at about 15 yards. So put it right on there, double long. You know, went about 50 yards downhill and that was it. So good deer, he's getting mounted. Um, I need to get the horns back to the taxidermist probably early summer. But uh, short of that, he lives here for now. I don't care where you go, you don't have to go home, but you just have to get out.